statements, a line of source code that executes. Expressions is another programming term, very similar to a statement, but it usually consists of one or more operators and operands. Keywords is another programming term. This is basically the words that make up the syntax of the computer programming language that you're using. Constants are values that do not change in a program, but you use all over your computer program. Functions or procedures. These are generically called subroutines, and these subroutines are basically a series of statements that are grouped under a common name and can be called over and over again. Arrays is another programming term. This is a group of values stored in memory that are referred to by a name and a number or an offset into that array. Comments, very important in programming. Uh, these, this is basically non-executable code and it's just used to help you document the source code that you wrote. Application or system. Basically, this is a complete computer program. You'll hear people call them applications, systems, or, or maybe just the software. Module, subsystem, component are basically one part of a computer program. Modules, subsystem, and components, when taken together, make up an application. So there are a lot of programming terms, and we're going to learn about most of these as we go through this video. Let's take a look at even some more terms that you'll hear when you become a computer programmer. ActiveX controls. An ActiveX control is basically a component of an application that supplies you with certain functionality. There's a lot of languages that use ActiveX controls, like Visual Basic, C++, Fox Pro, and even Delphi and Power Builder use ActiveX controls under a Windows environment. API, or Application Programming Interface, Basically, all this means is that somebody has written a set of functions to program one part of an operating system or maybe even a part of an application or a component. Engine is another programming term. Basically, it's a component that supplies a service to the rest of the computer program itself. Database is a file system that stores related information together. We will use databases typically in most programming that most of you will probably end up doing. Now that we've learned about some of the different terms of computer programming, let's talk about how we put all these terms together and talk about compilers and interpreters and how they bring them all together to break down into machine language so the computer can run it. Well, before a program can actually run on a computer, it needs to be broken down into something that the computer can read, and that's machine language. Now, this is accomplished in one of two ways. It can be interpreted, which means it, on the fly, actually reads every line of your source code and breaks it down into machine language, or it can be compiled one time into machine language, and then the machine just runs. So let's take a simple program like looping 10 times, and then each time we go through this loop, or this series of steps, we're going to add one to a variable, and then display that variable on the screen. This would be a series of about three or four steps. Now really there's only two executable statements in there. Add one to the variable and display the new value on the screen. The rest is just looping. Well, if we were talking about an interpreter, each time through the loop, the interpreter has to break down each of those statements into executable code. And this happens at runtime, or while the user is actually running the program, it's being broken down into machine language every time through this loop. Now, if you take that same program and you talk about a compiler, the compiler takes those two statements as well as the looping mechanism and breaks that down into machine language one time. Now, this takes time for you as a developer because you have to wait while the compiler breaks it down. But when the user runs the program, it's then already in that computer language, or the machine language, and so it can just run, which means it's probably going to run much quicker. Now there's advantages of an interpreter and advantages to compilers. Advantages of the interpreter is that you don't have to wait to compile that whole program, which means you get a quicker development cycle. However, the disadvantages is that at runtime, when your user's running the program, 
it can be slower than a compiled application. The advantages then of the compiler is that you get that quick runtime. However, it, the disadvantages is it slows you down as a developer. Now, obviously, the best of both worlds would be able to have an interpreter while you're developing, but then have a compiler when you're ready to put out your final application to your end user. And that's exactly what a lot of vendors are doing today. And they've also come up with a lot of other tricks to help us with our development cycle. Well, some of the things that these vendors have come up with are things called incremental compilers. Basically, what these do is they speed up your development cycle because they pre-compile those parts of the program that are finished. So as soon as you start typing and you finish one section, it will actually compile it in the background. Now, generally what it'll do is it'll also, after it has it compiled, is it'll only compile then those lines that you go back and change. This helps you speed up your development cycle because you don't have to wait for it to do the whole compilation process. They've also done things like what are called optimizing compilers. This means that the compiler itself looks at your source code and tries to figure out more efficient ways to express that statement. They also have what are called native code compilers. Now these are compilers that actually break code down into machine language for the particular machine you're on, like an Intel machine or maybe a Motorola or even a, another type of mini or mainframe computer. This helps you speed up and take advantage of all the features of that particular machine that you're running on. Also, P-code is another thing that they have come up with for interpreters. P-code basically means that it takes your source code and breaks it down into tokens. Tokens are then interpreted at runtime. Now, it's still slower than the native code or the compiled, you know, executable. However, it is faster than other interpreted languages since it doesn't have to read the full English statement. It just can read these tokens that the English-like statements have been broken down into. In this section, we looked at a lot of information about how to become a programmer. We talked about breaking down steps into a computer language. We talked about computer languages, machine language, assembly language, and high-level languages. We also talked about compilers and interpreters and how those are used to break down your source code into something the computer can execute.